intended to bring the power of Babylon.js to cross-platform applications beyond just the browser. The goal is to allow the reuse of the same JavaScript code that powers applications written in Babylon.js to work identically in native applications. And because we're running the same code, it lowers the development cost and increases consistency across different scenarios. So for, for example, GLT of rendering. Even the tools that we were mentioned earlier by Ronan uh, for the playground and uh, the editors that you saw will be useful because you can prototype in those tools first, get it working on the web, and then just basically copy it over and uh, have it work in the native environment. Um, furthermore, Babylon Native is about flexibility. We're no longer bound to the confines of a browser. We're free to choose any JS engine you want to use and any UI framework we want. We also try to make the library as flexible as possible so that we can integrate with almost anything. So here's a sort of non-exhaustive view um, of, the, of the runtime. The library consists of three main core parts. The core section you see on the left, uh, plugins in the middle, and um, polyfills. The core contains a graphics component, which uses BGFX. And BGFX is an abstraction layer for OpenGL, Metal, DirectX, and more. Okay. And it also hosts the JavaScript runtime, which loads Babylon.js itself, um, application-specific scripts for your application, or other dependencies. The plugin provides functionality such as uh, the native engine, which is a uh, it connects the Babylon JS engine with the graphics component so that it does the rendering. Native XR, which is the module I'm showing on screen here, which provides XR functionality for Babylon JS and relies on the underlying platform technologies. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, in a bit. And finally, we have uh, a few polyfills for common functionality uh, that Babylon depends on. But note that this is not the typical web polyfill. It's a partial polyfill, only enough to be able to support what Babylon.js needs. Yeah. And uh, finally, these components are perhaps optional, depending on what your situation is. Um, and they can either be completely omitted or replaced with a custom version if you need to. Yeah. This makes it possible for you to integrate with pretty much any existing technology. So this is where Babylon React Native uh, comes in. We can think of it as the glue between Babylon Native and React Native. It provides a React hook to manage the lifetime of a Babylon Native engine instance, um, as well as a UI component that provides a rendering surface for uh, Babylon Native to render to. And speaking of flexibility from the previous slide, Babylon Native is configured to hook into the same JavaScript context that uh, React Native uh, provides. And th this way, we don't have to create two separate JavaScript uh, contexts. It's actually using the same one. And like before, here's a breakdown of what React Native, what a React Native application looks like. At the top is the application itself, which relies on two main uh, NPM packages. On the right, you have Babylon.js core, which is the same package you would use if you were developing for a web application. And on the left is Babylon.js uh, React Native, which is the glue code I was mentioning earlier that will connect Babylon Native with React Native. And of course, Babylon Native then depends on all the things that it depends on. Uh, but I do want to call out one thing. Um, the XR part, as I mentioned earlier, relies on the platform-specific libraries. Right? So for Android, it will use AR Core. For um, iOS, it will use AR Kit. And for everything else, it will use OpenXR. Now, OpenXR is growing in the list of platforms that it supports. So eventually, it will make it, to, hopefully, to many different places. So we can use OpenXR for the, those platforms. 